What's up guys, how are you doing today? In the previous video, we looked at Cartoon Gun, the model behind this application. We understood how this model works, how it's been trained, and then we developed a small Python script using Python and PyTorch to test this model on some local images. Today, we deploy this model on AWS using serverless architecture. Without further ado, let's do this. Let's now have a look at the whole architecture of our project. On one side, we will have a React client and we'll look at this in the next video. On the other side, we will have a backend that is deployed on AWS. These two services will communicate with each other through post requests. And for example, if you send an image, this image will be sent through a post request. Then this image will be received via the API gateway. And once the API gateway receives this request, it will trigger a Lambda function. And basically a Lambda function is a runtime that will receive the image from the client. It will then load the models directly from S3, execute the style transformation, and then sending the result back to the client through the API gateway. This architecture is quite simple and it's also serverless. Serverless means that you don't have to create and manage servers yourself. This is automatically done for you by AWS and it has a lot of benefits. A serverless architecture is first of all cost efficient. If you don't use it, you don't have to pay for it. The second benefit is scalability. For example, if your application starts having a lot of users, uh, AWS will manage the load for you. It will uh, allocate more resources so that your quality of service remains the same. Now, how can we deploy such an architecture? When I started using serverless, I had to go through the AWS console. I had, to, I had to select each individual service individually and manage the connection between all of them. It was painful and it was also prone to many errors. Um, hopefully I won't be doing this again in this project. Instead, I will be using a very powerful tool called serverless framework. The serverless framework is a tool that will allow us to write our code directly, our infrastructure directly as code by modifying a YAML file before deploying it. And you see, this is very simple and you can also have more control on the interaction of your individual services. This is very nice and you'll see how to do this. Before using the serverless framework, you'll have to make sure that you have created an AWS account and also an S3 bucket where you have to put the pre-trained models. And then you'll have to configure serverless by creating an IAM user. So let's do this very quickly. You'll have to go through the IAM console. You have to add a user like this. I've created a user, but I will do this just to show you how it's done. So I will name it test. I will allocate programmatic access. I will then give it administrator access. Then I won't be using any tags. And once the user is created, you will have some credentials. Copy these credentials and paste them directly in this command. And then once you run it, you will be able to configure your serverless account. Okay, now when this is done, you'll have to create a boilerplate code for our project. So run this command directly on the terminal. So once this command is done, we'll have a folder called cartoonify and inside this folder we'll have two files handler.py is the lambda function and serverless.yaml is the file that holds our architecture so let's use it okay let's fire up vs code so as you can see here we have lots of boilerplate code so we won't be using any of that so i'm gonna just erase it I will only keep the service name and we'll modify it to make and deploy our application. Before using serverless, we'll have to install two plugins. Uh, you'll have to know that serverless has a lot of plugins by the community and we'll be using two of them. The first one is called serverless Python requirement. It will allow us to manage the dependencies of our Lambda deployment package. And the second one is serverless plugin warmup. It will allow us to keep our Lambda function always available to any request. So this will basically prevent the cold start effect. So let's install them. Okay, now let's install the second package. 
and we're done. Now we can start modifying our lambda, our serverless file. So I will just erase all of this like I did earlier, and then try start to modify. Now to define our infrastructure as code, we'll have to modify five sections inside the serverless.yaml. The first section is the provider section, and basically we will specify here the cloud provider, the runtime we'll be using, we'll set also the profile that we have created, the region, the timeout, and also specify some role statement. We will, in our case, allow the get object action to allow and read directly the models from the S3 bucket and will also allow the lambda function to access to this bucket. Okay, so copy paste this first. Then the second section is the custom section where we'll, be, we'll, where we'll specify the requirement for our plugins. Basically we'll have two plugins. The first one is the Python serverless Python requirement. We will tell it to slim zip all the dependencies and also to not deploy some other useless packages in order to make our deployment package very light at the end. The warm-up will be also customized and we will tell it to run the warm-up effect on our lambda function every five minutes so that it gets it remains available. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the third section is the package section and basically we will tell it to handle the production environment from our Lambda by excluding files and unnecessary files. Okay, now the fourth section is the function where we define the runtime of our Lambda function. Basically, we will first specify the handler, it's the Lambda it's a function that is contained inside the file. Okay, and then we'll have to allocate the max memory to our Lambda, specify the timeout, and also specify the event that will trigger our Lambda. In this case, it will be a post request directly on the path transform. And then we'll have to specify warm up to true because we want our Lambda to be warmed up. Okay. Okay, this is the fourth section and finally the last one is the plugin section this will indicate which plugins we will be using okay now we're done so um, let's now deploy our infrastructure oh all right we can do this because we'll have to specify our lambda function first and also the requirement of our packages so yeah Let's do this. We'll have to create a requirement file, requirements.txt. Inside this requirement, we will have three packages, torch, torch vision, and pillow. We'll have to make sure that the Python version of each package matches the runtime that we'll be using. We'll have 3.7, so it's all right. And also, you have to make sure that the packages are based on a Linux-based environment because it's the same OS as the Lambda function runtime. Now we'll have to modify the handler, so I'm gonna just erase it. Basically the handler is inspired from the function that we have defined in the previous video, so I will first start by importing the packages. So as you can see, we have torch dependencies, we have some native dependencies from the OS, and we have also these dependencies that depends on the Lambda runtime environment. I will have also to add the folder network. Inside this folder, I will add the architecture of our generator model. This architecture, you can grab it directly from the GitHub account, so don't worry about that. And we're done. Now, inside our handler function, we'll have to specify first two functions. 
The first one is image to base 64, so it gets an image from the client to be a pillow image, and then this image will be, it's a binary image, and then this image will be transformed to a string representation. And then the second function is load models. It will get an S3 object and a bucket name. It will be used to load the models directly from S3, create a dictionary, so something like what we saw earlier in the previous video inside our notebook. So I will specify some parameters inside the main thread of our Lambda, so GPU minus one because we won't be using any. S3, so it's the object that we use uh, to call our models directly from S3, and the bucket name. I have also specified the mapping ID to style, and we will see why, how we will be using it in the in this script. I start by loading the models from S3, and then, finally, I will define the Lambda handler. So the Lambda handler looks like the function that we defined earlier in the previous video. It will get an event in context by default, so ignore this for now. Once the Lambda handler gets triggered by a POST request, it will receive a body object, and inside this body we'll have a key that will have and hold our image in the text format. So we'll have to decode this image and convert it to a pillow image, and then we'll have also to load the metadata directly from our client. Basically, we'll have to load the model ID and the load size. So basically, the model ID will tell us which style we'll be using, thanks to this mapping. And then once we have this two information, we can load the appropriate model given the style, and then we can also resize our image given the load size that we have extracted. Then it's the same code as we saw in the next step, so I'm gonna just skip it. And finally, once we have the output result, we can send it back inside a JSON object, and that's where we use the image to base 64 representation, to, uh, re to return the image as a string format. So we turn return it inside a body, and then we can access to it by the output key. Okay. All right, so now we have our handler, we have our serverless file, and also we have our requirements. Now we'll have to deploy our Lambda function. So before doing this, we'll have to make sure that we have Docker running because it will be used to create the dependencies of our Lambda. So run it if you haven't already, and then go to the terminal and run the following command, sls deploy. And once you run it, and if it's successful, you will be given a new URL that will be used to execute the Lambda function. So if you have done this, uh, you can later test it directly from the Jupyter Notebook. So let's now deploy this Lambda. Okay, now our Lambda is done deploying. As you can see, we have a URL that we can test and directly play with our model. Before deploying this Lambda, you'll have also to make sure that the handler.py is inside SRC. It was not the case when I first deployed this Lambda function and it failed, so I had to rearrange the structure of the files, and now hopefully it will work again. So let's test this Lambda on our Jupyter Notebook. I will load here an image from a path, and then I will convert it into a base64 format in the string, and then I will build a payload data composed of the image, the model ID, and the load size. I will start with something small, so let's say 200. Then I will create a post request on this URL with this payload data, and then we can see the response time. So we have one second, it's fairly good for 200 pixels, and we can see and visualize the content of this response. As you can see, we have an output, and inside the output, we have the JSON, the string representation of our image, it looks good. Now we can read this JSON, convert the output to a base64 image, and then convert it back to a pillow object, and you can see the result. Now if we increase the size a little bit, we can see that it takes a little bit more time, maybe 4 seconds, 
we have the same output structure and as you can see we have a better nice looking result all right so thank you guys for watching we've seen how to create an api with our model now in the next video we'll see how to interact with this api by building a nice and custom react interface thank you guys for watching again and see you in the next video